Hi guys! So today I'm going to show you how to make your own mirror font in Silhouette Studio. I am running with the newest version right now, 4.3. And this will work on any of the versions that you have. It will work on the basic edition all the way up to business. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. This is kind of all the rage right now, but if you purchase a font, you're limited to only that font. So I'm going to show you some different ways that you can do this. Let's get right to it. First, I'm going to type out my word. And I suggest that you use all capital letters. If you use lowercase, when you slice it, you lose some on the top half. We're going to change the font. So on this first one here, I used College Block 2.0 Outline, which is a paid font. There is a, a free version of just College Block 2.0 on Defont, but it doesn't have the outline. So let's try another one. This is Collegiate Outline. And I'm going to drop links down below in the description of where all the fonts come from so you can get them yourself. And if you notice on the example over here, and a lot of the ones you might have seen online, is the middle word is solid and the outlines, or, and the mirrors are outlined. So I'm going to show you how to adapt that. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to replicate this a few times so that we have a couple copies. I always like to have a few copies, just in case. So for this first one, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to release Compound Path. And so now you can see that it's no longer a path, but it's all still grouped together. So I'm going to ungroup. And then we're going to delete out all of these inner pieces here. Because they can go bye-bye. Now, if you're have, having trouble seeing the lines that you have, you can also change it to a transparent fill. And that kind of gives you a better view. We're just going to go through here, delete these out. I'm going to select everything again, and we want to put that compound path back. So click Make Compound Path. I'm going to make this orange. That's the school colors. And I like to turn my outline transparent. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is create this mirror. And there's a couple different techniques and styles that are out there. One is with each mirror image being the same height. And then another one is staggered. So let's start with the same height. And what we're going to do is, I don't know if you can see around my mouse here, there are crosshairs coming out. Uh, top, bottom, left, and right. And those really come in handy for this. If you have Designer Edition and above, I believe that's a feature. I'm not sure if it's available on Basic. But if you open your page setup and click on the second tab right here, crosshairs is right there. You can turn those on. So what I'm going to do is grab my knife tool, make sure you're set to solid up here, and then I'm going to kind of use that crosshair to figure out where exactly I want to slice this. And I'm going to go just below the point of that M because I don't want to have just a tiny little piece. So I'm going to click there, and drag across. Now, you'll notice that my line is straight. When I'm moving it, it's not moving. Now it's moving. If you hold down the shift key while you drag your line, or even when you get to the end, it's going to snap to that perfectly horizontal. So hold that shift key down, click again, and we're sliced. I'm going to drag to select everything, and then group so that all the pieces stay together. Right click, group. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to put this one up here, this one here. And I'm not worried about getting it perfectly aligned. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a couple more copies. And I'm going to take this top one and nudge it up just a little bit. Take this bottom one and bump it down just a little bit. I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to open my transform panel and you'll see here that we have a vertical spacing. So if I click that, what it's going to do is going to create some even space between all of those. If you look at it, it's not enough space. I just go in, bump the top one up a little bit, bump the bottom one down a little bit, 
doesn't have to be exact because select them all and click that spacing again. We're going to align everything to the left. You can see it's all kind of jagged. So like if this one was over here a little bit, and then select them all, click horizontal, and it lines them all up perfectly straight. We're going to turn everything orange. Again, I like my lines transparent. And I'm going to group. And now we have a couple different versions here. So there's our two versions so far. And now we're going to do one that's staggered. So I'm actually going to make another copy of this. And we're going to work from here. So I'm going to right click ungroup. I want to keep this one that we've split in half because we're going to need that again anyway. And I'm going to delete these other ones because our first one is going to be a taller like about two-thirds height, and then the bottom one is going to be about a third. So, got this extra guy over here, and we're going to do the same thing as before, but this time, we're not going to slice it in half, we're going to slice it in a one-third, two-third ratio. I'm actually going to need two of these, so let me go ahead and make another copy. Alright, so, again, knife tool. Find your spot that's about a third of the way from the bottom and I'm just eyeballing it you can you can break out your ruler or whatever you want to do um, hold down that shift key while you drag so that you get that perfectly straight line click and that's it select everything right click group select the bottom right click group and then for this bottom one, we're going to slice the top third. So I'm going to a knife tool here. Figure out where that third is. Drag, hold down that shift key. And group. Again, you can use your keyboard shortcuts. If you're on a Mac, it's Command-G, or a PC is Control-G to also group, so you don't have to right-click. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So this thicker top half is going to go right above the word. And the thicker bottom half is going to go right below. And then we have our one that's half that we've already done. And here, select everything. Do that vertical space. Find it to the left. And go ahead and group everything together. And I'm going to make it all orange. I think that's more visually appealing to me. It's all the same color. And there you go. So there's another way to do it. Here we have our mirror that is an equal height up and down and then this one that goes into thirds. So let me show you how to do this if you have a font that's not already outlined. I'm going to show you with the college block font because that one is free on the font. Looks like I left a piece out somewhere on that last one. We got left out of something. Make this bigger. I'm going to use College Block. It is free on the font for personal use. I will drop a link in the description of where you can get this. And before I do anything, because right now it's a font, I want to turn it into a shape instead of an editable font. I'm going to right click and make a compound path. And then again, our middle one's solid, so we've got that done. We're going to duplicate and then we're going to open our offset panel. Here in the offset panel, let's zoom in here. I'm going to click internal offset and then make sure that you've got this corner set instead of the rounded. And I'm just going to adjust. You can see right now how thick this is. I'm just going to adjust this offset until it's about the thickness that I want. I'm going to apply and then I'm going to group everything together. 
right click, make compound path. And that's going to turn it into our outline. And then you would do the same thing. Get your knife tool. Slice it in half. Do your grouping. That's all there is to it. Again, make your copies. Get your spacing, line it up, and whatever color you want it to be. It makes it easier for you to look at it in the right color. And that's it. That's all it is. And then Keep in mind, you don't have to do just college and sports and all that stuff. You can do this with anything. Oh, all caps. We're going to do a font that has a couple different versions. It has a solid version and it has an outline version. So this way we don't even have to do any editing to that. And this font is called Uncle Grump. So you can see this basic version here. Little piece. This basic version here is solid, but there's also a outline version. So I'm just going to make a copy, and I'm going to change that one to the outline. And then we're going to get our knife blade, cut it in half. There are groups here. In this middle one, I need to make this not a word anymore. I'm going to make compound path. Now it's a shape instead of a font. And for duplicates. And you could even do an extra one. If you wanted to do more than three, you don't have to do three. You can do however many you want. Space it out. Line it up. And group it. And then we can make it another color, and that's all there is to it. So it doesn't have to be sports and school and college and high school and, and all of that stuff. You could do it with anything. Create your own mirror font out of any font you have on your computer. Again, I will drop links to all the fonts that I used in the description so that you can grab those yourself, but you're not limited to just what I use. So get creative with it. If this video was helpful, I would love it if you would click on the subscribe button so that you can get updates for all my upcoming videos. I'm getting ready to do a Silhouette Cameo 4 unboxing, so that should be exciting. If you make something, pop over to my Facebook page, LB Creates on Facebook. Drop me a photo of what you made. Questions asked below. And again, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.